Mother said she would bring us salvation. It was a glorious message, and for that she gained a devoted following. As for me, how could I doubt the woman who pulled me from the fiery wreck, who raised me as her own? I thought that together we would save the Sky Realm, even if it meant cutting down any who opposed us. But over time, the sacrifices began to mount. I... I struggled. My reason battled with my heart, which battled with my conscience. Mother was pure and righteous, but to sacrifice the entire Sky Realm. No. she just lost her way for a bit. She'd wake up one day and see she had strayed. As her child, as her defender, I wanted to believe that she'd change for me. Even at the very end, when I was forced to turn my sword on her, I was praying for an alternative. Any alternative. But she would not repent. And I was confronted with the full force of the atrocities I'd committed in Avia's name. But there was one light left to guide me. Just follow your heart. It might lead you to scary places. But at least you'll know you're being true to yourself. Thank you, Lyria. If you hadn't reminded me of my own strength, I'd still be in the dark following Lilith. I swear to you that I will fix even more than I destroyed. And one day, perhaps I will be worthy of your forgiveness. Fifteen years ago, Dali fell prey to a violent catastrophe. One that still lives etched in my mind. There was an explosion. Immense and sudden. My home went up in flames, and with it the only life I had ever known. People were fleeing and dying in all directions. The air was filled with screams and the smell of burning. Then I heard it. The soul-piercing roar of a dragon. My short life should have come to an end that day. Except... Shh. It's okay. Let me be the one to save you. Salvation came in the form of a kind woman. Her name was Lilith, prophet of the Pilgrims of Avia. From that day forth, she was both my mother and mentor. <sighs> I worshipped her, and the thing about devotion is, it makes you blind. Mother had followers in the hundreds, thousands, and my simple child's mind thought, well, if this many people have faith in her, she has to be good, right? I wanted desperately to be of use to her, so I trained to be the perfect guardian. Young Eid, one day you shall be as mighty as I. General Galanza taught me how to fight. You wouldn't want the other pilgrims saying you're riding your mother's coattails, would you? Then you must prove yourself. General Magliel taught me why we fight. Her training was harsh, but that's how I acquired the makings of a general. All effort... No nepotism. Finally, I had some value to Mother. Her sharpest sword. I never felt happier or more accomplished. I thought we were going to save the Sky Realm. The naivete of it all. After we captured the Shaman of Salvation for Lilith's cause, I was assigned to be the girl's keeper. That made me enemy number one to the Grand Cypher's crew. Every time I took Lyria to a primal beast altar, they'd be there, and we'd fight. I mean, there was a time or two we had to cooperate to prevent widespread calamity. But that's beside the point. They were standing in the way of Lilith's mission, 
opening a path to the promised land to Estelusia, and bringing salvation to all sky dwellers. Salvation. It's a powerful word in a messed up world like ours. No wonder everyone got roped in by her lies. Lilith was no more than an astral desperate to return to her home dimension. And she would have sacrificed the whole Sky Realm to do it. I tried to reason with her. Might as well have asked an avalanche to change course. So I turned to prayer. But what are hopes and belief without action? So left with no other choice, I joined the crew of the Grand Cipher too. Dispatch my own mother. But I never could have foreseen what would happen next. Lilith did something, and freed a monster from within me. The dragon I'd seen the day Dolly burned, with wings so vast they overshadowed all of Sega Grande. Bahamut, Versa. But then I learned, Bahamut didn't cause the Dolly calamity. It had come to stop it. It was Lilith who killed my family and raised my home. She'd only let me live for one reason. She needed a vessel to seal the dragon in. And I was conveniently nearby. She'd raised me to win my loyalty. And protect herself from the god of destruction now living inside me. But when I stopped being of use to her, she abandoned me. And let me turn in to Bahamut. I don't know how to describe the feeling of flesh melting into scales, the fire filling your stomach. All human warmth, human blood seemed to rush from my veins, and it was replaced by an overwhelming urge to destroy. It was like being swept away in a torrent. Any attempt to fight it only made the suffering worse. I was so tempted to give in. But the crew wouldn't let me. Apparently, the captain was sure I wouldn't lose my soul battle with Bahamut. So to help me along, they decided to beat on the dragon from the outside until he coughed me up. Yeah, not the most elaborate plan. But it worked. The whole time they were fighting, they called my name, and the sound of their voices brought me back. I split myself from Bahamut, then joined the crew to take it down. We had our losses, though. Bahamut hit me and the captain with a blow that sent us hurtling into another dimension. A man named Roland dove in to save us, sacrificing himself along the way. And that's how we came back to Folka without him. Roland used to be the local Mr. Fixit, by the way. And I took up that mantle. I owed him that much. And I figured it'd be a first step in making amends. And that's where this new chapter in my life begins. Me, as the new Mr. Fixit. After clearing up some requests, I thought I'd earn some, I don't know, respect, honor, from the crew alliance or folly. But it seems you can't buy forgiveness so easily. Ahem. So I believe we're all aware of Avia's assault on Seed Hollow? She looked straight at me as she spoke. The actions of the pilgrims. Myself included had left a number of locals without homes. There was a plan to resettle volunteers in Tempil. Give them a fresh start. They're going to be out in the open, moving, building. This includes children and the elderly. Your job would be to protect the settlers until their homes are up. Trustworthy Skyfarers only. Hey, don't push yourself. You can sit this one out, you know. Rackham lay a hand on my shoulder, but I shook my head at him. We take it. This is right. I couldn't stay stuck in the past forever. I needed to move on. I needed to help those I hurt move on. It wasn't an easy choice, though. 
Our patron, the family who was bankrolling this mission, didn't know I'd worked for Avia. And I didn't know if I had the guts to tell them. Yeah, I know. How am I supposed to atone for crimes I'm too scared to admit? Still, one step at a time. Too much of a coward to take responsibility? Fine. I could at least start by repairing some of the damage I'd done. I'd make sure the settlers built in peace. And if one of them happened to find out about my past, then that would be that. I'd accept whatever punishment they saw fit to give me. It didn't matter where I hid or how far I ran. Retribution would find me eventually. The ride to Tempeel was uneventful. The proposed relocation site was set near an old storehouse by the river. There was water here, and the building could be repurposed for homes. The migrants dragged their feet and often looked back towards Seed Hollow. Most had been born and raised there. We'd been hired as bodyguards, but for the time being at least, all was quiet. Just the sound of wind and running water. Patrols didn't take long, and only one or two people had to go at a time. The rest of us found other ways to keep busy. Carrying supplies, repairing the storehouse, prepping materials, cooking. Whatever needed doing, we did it. While the adults were building the new body of the village, the children, they were forming the new heart of it. It's amazing how kids can find happiness in just about anything. The world's fresh and new to them. Down by the river, they discovered unfamiliar plants and bugs with funny shapes. In the old storehouse, they looked for hidden treasure and lost stories. Sure, sometimes they got in the way of work and were scolded. But you could tell the adults appreciated having the kids around. It gave them hope. Eo and Lyria were their self-appointed babysitters. They called it serious work, but it looked like fun and games to me. Those kids didn't have a care in the world. Well, all except one of them. There was a girl who would always glance my way, pretty much from day one of this job. I say girl, but she was a Harvin, so her age was hard to pinpoint. But she played with the kids more than she worked, so I assumed. Anyways, turned out she was a teenager. That would explain the looks she gave me. I don't think any kid could have been filled with such fear, such anger, such hate. Didn't take much to guess why she had a grudge against me. But she made sure I knew. It happened one day when I was on my way to the storehouse to stack some freight. She was in my path, and since I had a load of boxes in my arms, I almost bowled her over. Ah! Don't come closer! Her voice was loud and shrill. I won't hurt you. I promise. Yeah, right. Everyone else might have forgotten you, but I haven't. We're here because of you. Her name was Shiralu, 14 years old. Parents volunteered to come on this resettlement mission after they had lost their livelihoods back in Seed Hollow. She had reason to hate me. During this whole exchange, I felt strangely... relieved. No more waiting in the shadows, trying to work up the courage to atone. Atonement had come for me. Why are you here? To take our new homes? Never. I only wished I were better with words. To convey even a fraction of the guilt I felt. To give her even the slightest comfort. Not a day goes by where I don't regret what I've done. I wanted to tell her I was ready to repent. But my voice came out flat. Insincere. A liar and... But she was cut off by warning bells. 
I raced back to the settlement center, where I found Rackham. Goblin sighting! Get everyone inside the gates, Prano! His voice rose up over the cacophony. An attack! But my father just left for the storehouse! Remain here. I'll find him. I left without waiting for a response. Come on! Just like we practiced! We'll handle the goblins! Everyone's safe! Should be. That's why we're here, isn't it? Now come on, we got goblin tail to kick! There's more here! They're trying the pincer maneuver. Vern, you watch over the settlers. Got it! Leave it to me! There's so many. Where they all come from. Heard this place used to be Monster Central. Guess these are the stragglers. Anything, Miria. First, we secure the area, then we start a search. Brave await! Shalou, isn't that the harbor? It. Do you know something? Great. We'll get the search party started. Right after these messages. The tide's rising. Watch your now! Sounds about right. She was worried about her dad. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go! Heads up! There's another goblin band over here! What? Shirolu, where did you go? Focus on the fight at hand! Here they come! Speak okay. Oh, Take this! Get back! Stop We're here to help. Do you think you can stay hidden for a bit? Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. There's more? Out of my way! Wait, I recognize that voice. This is power! Now watch my back! Looks like we're all clear. You can come out now, Shirolu. <sighs> it was a close call, but we managed to find Shirolu in time. Everything's going to be okay now. Thank you. Lyria ran over to the girl. I don't think Shirolu was injured, but her face was pale and her lips were tight. It had to have been me. The reason she looked so pained. If I hadn't forced her from her home, she wouldn't have almost lost her life. I turned and walked a few steps. I'll secure the way back. Bring her when she feels better. Wait, Id? Shirolu needed good people around her. What did I ever bring but suffering? The day after the goblin attack, I had an unlikely visitor. Shirolu. You didn't have to save me, but 
Thank you. That took me completely off guard. I searched wildly in my mind for a response, but all that came out was... I was just trying to do the right thing. <sighs> Look, Avia almost destroyed Seed Hollow, and I won't ever forgive you for that. Do you know how many people were hurt? I'm sorry. Like I said, words, not my strong point. Is there any way I can make amends? I will do anything. She looked at me for a moment, her lips working, searching for an answer. Her eyes slowly welled up with tears. Can you bring back the dead? <laughs> I didn't think so. If I could trade my life for even one I'd taken, I'd have done it in a heartbeat. But she was right. Those people were gone, and never coming back. I can't talk about this now. Maybe I shouldn't have come. Have a good... Goodbye. She turned and walked away. Her voice shook the entire time we were talking. With anger, I guessed. And grief. But she'd still forced herself to thank me. It hit me then how kind she was. If Avia had never existed, she might have never known the corrosive influence of hate. Our crimes went beyond the people we killed. Even those that survived, they now had to live with the trauma and sleepless nights. It was all so heavy. I was beginning to see that I'd never be able to atone. Not if I had 100,000 years and all the power in the skies. We now knew the settlement was a prime target for goblins. We'd cleared out a band of them, but there would always be more. We decided to tighten our defenses. More frequent patrols with bigger teams. I was quick to volunteer for the first shift. Uria, Vern, and the captain came along. Hey, we noticed things are kind of tense between you and Shiralu. Do you want to talk about it? Lyria kept pace beside me, peering up into my face. What's there to say? My past was for me to solve. I didn't need to make the crew part of my guilt. She knew, didn't she, that you were once part of Avia? All right, fine. Who was I kidding? No one kept secrets with these three around. Someone was going to find out eventually. Just... Don't worry about it. But Vern and Lyria pushed back. We're buds now, right? Your problems are my problems. Exactly. We can talk to Shirilu together. This is your chance to make things right. You know, sometimes when you feel lost in a hostile world, that's all it takes to put things into perspective. A few kind words. Okay, but there's no half-assing it. Whatever Shirulu asks, we give it to her. Do you understand? I was offered no answer, but their eyes told me enough. Sins are only burned away through atonement. This was the way things had to be. We walked for a while in silence, until finally the captain nodded. And I was told, the crew would do what was right. Days passed, and the demeanor of the settlers when they were around me began to change. Bright eyes turned into cold stares. Open hands clenched into fists, smiles morphed into sneers. They had begun avoiding me, too. It was easy enough to guess why. On an afternoon, buried under gray clouds, the rest of the crew gathered around me in a show of solidarity. I'd recommend keeping your distance. 
I'm a known criminal now. I stared ahead of me into empty space. Maybe Shiralu had told the others about me. Maybe she hadn't. What did it matter? The truth was bound to come out eventually. This was justice. But, Id, you didn't hurt anyone because you wanted to. You were being controlled. The captain knelt beside me and pointed out excuses I'd rehearsed in my mind a million times before. That as a child, I couldn't have known the difference between right and wrong. That as an adult, I was blinded by my love for Lilith. That in choosing to turn against my family for the sake of the skies, I had sacrificed the most. Yeah, I had misguided intentions, so what? If that were a real defense, we wouldn't have any villains, would we? I deserve to be judged for my actions, and my actions alone. They all fell silent after that. Shirilu found me during one of my patrols. She stood in front of me, fidgeting with the cloth of her skirt. I'm sorry. I only told one person and then... somehow everyone found out. With all due respect, save your apologies. Looking back, I realize I should have chosen my words more carefully. Something like, you don't have to apologize. All you told them was the truth. You know, something a person with a heart would have said. No, you don't get it! Yeah, she had a right to be upset. Only I could have sounded so accusing when what I really meant to say was, it wasn't your fault. Just tell me one thing. Did the church really brainwash you? And did you really have to fight your own mother? What? Where do you hear about that? Your friend told me. The captain. Of course. The captain promised me the crew would do what was right. Guess that meant giving my whole backstory to Shiralu. Anyways, it doesn't matter where I heard it. What matters is whether it's true or not. So... Why did she need to know? Would my good intentions bring back the dead? Shiralu knew the answer to that as well as I did. My past is no excuse. So it is true. You're a victim. Just like us. No. I was the perpetrator. I had to be the perpetrator. How else could I explain the guilt that sat on my chest? It made it hard to breathe. But before I could say any of this, I was interrupted by the shrill ringing of warning bells. What's going on? Just as before, Rackham was making rounds to explain the situation. It looks bad. Our supply runners are under goblin attack. Supply routes were the lifeline of any settlement. They needed to be cleared immediately. I'll head out now. Shirulu, find your family and get to safety. Okay, I won't leave the village this time. Good. I met up with the others, and we left for battle. Well, thank goodness you're here! If we lose these supplies, we lose the village! You have to help me! No problemo. Goblin Hunter's my middle name. Let's fucking more fighting! The cloud Get down here! Wow! Huh? Reinforcements! To think they still had hordes in reserve! What? Now? We can't abandon the supplies. I'll go back. Can you handle things here? Sure can. You just worry about getting to the village in time, girl boy. All right, kid. Let's roll! Come on, bud. We're almost there. Okay. They've overrun the place! There's less than I thought. Perfect. Where are those 
Skyfarers. Uh, I'm so scared. Someone's here. It's... it's Id. Stay inside. Don't come out until I say so. You're planning to fight them alone? You can't win! You've never seen Id when he's serious. He'll be fine. What happened to us? What the? Stop moving! All I wanted was to protect people. I know I've made mistakes in the past, but I have changed. And I'll prove it. He's facing all those monsters. For us. But if it weren't for him, he wouldn't be in this situation. I know that Avia robbed us of our old sins. But right now, it's fighting to protect our new ones. There's still more of them. Oh, crap! Now I'm getting worried. No, Vern. I can do this. It. No! More goblins are coming! <laughs> Don't give in, Ed! Why are you cheering him on? Listen to me. It might have done some terrible things in the past, but look at the person who's out there right now! He's risking everything to save us! Is that what a villain does? <laughs> You're right. I'll never forgive the Church of Avihead, but Ed's no longer one of them. He helped build this village, and now he's protecting it. That means he's become one of us. I believe in Ed. He's our last hope. Please, Ed! Pull through! We're counting on you! Protect them! I have to! Whoa! That's insane! He powered up! I've seen too many holes burned in my life. I won't let it happen here! You can do it, Ed! Get your own cheering for you, Ed! Show those monsters who's boss! <laughs> My sword cut clean through the last goblin. It's over. As I pulled my blade clear of its flesh, it trailed an arc of blood through the air. I felt the settlers behind me, watching, judging. You see, I thought, this is the kind of monster I am. I can't believe it! You did it, Ed! You really did it! Sure, though. Broke the silence with the cheer. For me, I had to say something. The goblins are gone. All at once, the migrants rushed me. Hands took hold of me and lifted me into the air. Those were fearsome odds, but you pulled through! You saved us! Thank you, Id. These people knew I had destroyed their homes. So why were they rallying to me? Sorry I'm late. What'd I miss? The crew was now filing back into the village. They gazed up at me open-mouthed. I'm sure I looked back at them with pretty much the same expression. Oh, nothing. Just it single-handedly annihilating a goblin army. The settlers finally put me down and began telling exaggerated accounts of the battle. I tried to take the opportunity to slink off and find conversation with something more my level. Maybe a tree or something. Hey, just where do you think you're sneaking? Is our resident bad boy feeling shy? I shot Rackham my nastiest look. But only because he had guessed the truth. You should be proud, Id. You saved everyone here. Come on, Lyria. It had to be obvious that I wanted to be left to myself. Truth was, I didn't think I deserved all this praise. So I saved a small settlement. Great. Guess we'd forgotten I've also raised entire cities. The captain strolled up to me and 
after elbowing me in the ribs, asked, how was it to fight for the good guys? That I had an easy answer to. Not bad, I said. Not bad at all. The morning after the second goblin strike, the sun rose on a quiet scene. The river glinted gold, the grass stirred in the breeze. The migrants came with our breakfast, and a peace offering. Avia attacked our homeland. We'll never forget that pain. But you proved yourself a true ally yesterday. Everyone saw you risk your life for us. You've earned our trust. They seem to be leading up to something, so I asked with my usual eloquence. And... Well, if it's all right with you, we'd like you to stay and protect our fledgling village. I could not believe my ears. No. I... I'm not the person for the job. I've committed atrocities. Head. Lyria's voice sounded from behind me. I turned to see her smiling. You're right. She hadn't said anything, but I got the message. I had spent these past few weeks looking for punishment, hoping it would somehow numb my guilt. But how was my pain supposed to help anyone? I had become the new Mr. Fix-It. I was going to dedicate my life to helping more people than I hurt. That was the best. The only way to atone. What's wrong, Id? You look like you've gone into brooding overdrive. What? No, I... I'm happy. Buddy, you ever heard of a smile? At this, the crowd laughed. I raised the corner of my lips, as if testing them. This made the crowd laugh harder. Sorry to interrupt, but could I have a word? It was one of the soldiers from the supply force. As some of you may already know, we weren't only responsible for transporting supplies. We were also tasked with assessing the resettlement effort. And I think it's no stretch to say the local monster presence is deadly. I'll have to ask the higher-ups to consider relocating. Shirulu answered before I could. Not a problem. We've got a beast slaying Mr. Fixit on our side. As the local Mr. Fixit, I've had a finger in every pie. From furniture repair to monster extermination to marriage counseling, I've seen it all. Though I admit, the counseling did not come naturally to me. Still, I wanted to help in any way I could. I owed the skies that much. A new request came in today. From an old friend. Ed, was it my imagination, or did I see you crack a smile? Lyria materialized at my shoulder, and tried to read the forms in my hand. Yeah. Work's been... nice. I handed her the papers. And there, written in plain view, was the name of our latest patron. Shirelou. 